Here we go, y'all. Are y'all ready for part two? Well, I hope so. And I definitely hope you guys are donating to the page because that is why you're getting part two as quickly as you are getting it. Because people donated and said, this is what I love. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I want to hear. People swear to God I made this video. No, I just, well, you would think I have. Never made it. Kept you guys waiting for years before I gave you this one, didn't I? Now, <laughs> this is part two. And don't forget, donate to the page. Hit the Cash App up. Carcino is the name on the Cash App. Y'all know that. Or hit the Donate button in the stream lab and get busy. Now, like I said, this is part two. So that means if you follow, just clicked on this and said, hmm, what's going on here? That means there's a part one. <laughs> Go back, watch that, then come back here. Because <laughs> we're going to commence right where we left off before. Now, the photo you're looking at now with Preem and Jay on there. And when this is happening, a lot of different things are transpiring. You know, Irv hooked this up to where Preem could get this photo with Jay. Preem wanted to send this shot at 5th. And was like, I'm assigned with Jay. This is where I'm at. Look where I'm at. Look where you at. You out the game and can't get in the game. And I'm sitting here with the biggest artist in the game. Now Nas just hit this man with Ether. So this is like right during the after Ether period. So Jay wanted this photo more than anything because Jay wanted to show he was in a beef with Nas. And at this point, he wanted to show I need to get all the Queensbridge people on my side. So I want to show Nas I got more rep than Queensbridge than he got. So he got Core Mega on his side. He went and donated money. And Queensbridge went and put, like, I'm finna feed some families and bought the family's groceries and picked a couple of families over there in Queensbridge and was like, Nas ain't doing this. See, I'm doing this. So he's over there doing that and trying to get respect in Queensbridge. Then you take a picture with Preen. Like, look, I'm in Queens. I got more Queens hitters than you do. You know, so he was sending this shot not at fifth. He was doing and taking this picture for Nas. <laughs> so it, this was all about Nas. That's why this whole photo on his, what he was doing with that. This had nothing to do with fifth. To him, fifth was gone. Jay never thought fifth would ever come back in the game. He thought this guy is done. After what had happened and what went down, he was like, yeah, that guy's, you know, he's not coming back in this game. That's how Jay felt at the time. Now, Preem, as I told you, was doing that to show Fifth what, what was going on there. So that was it. That was the only time they were even around each other. But Fifth already was like, you were opposition. You've aligned yourself to Irv Gotti and Ja and all these dudes. And after what they did to me, anybody associated with them got to go down. And now Nas then turned on me. So he filled with the Jennifer Lopez situation. So now Nas is cut off. Even though Fifth was a brave heart for a minute and thinking that was going to help him, this happened. Tone and Pope turned on him. So Fifth was like, it's me against the world. F. Everybody. 
<laughs> he got Yayo. He went and got only people that was from Southside. Southside Jamaica Queens, uh, people that was around him that he could trust. One of the guys he used to get into it with as a kid, who was one of the kids who beat him up when he was a little fat dude in there talking reckless with his mouth. And they used to beat on him, you know, jump him. He'll still come back and still fight him and still talk. And one of them dudes was Lloyd Banks, who was ill. So ill, Fifth put him in the, on the team. So him, Yayo, and Fifth, that was the main head of G-Unit. And they recorded right in his mom's basement. He hustled, brought the money back, flipped that and started making CDs. And had an idea that we're going to create a buzz in the streets. It's going to be so heavy that everybody in the industry is going to have to pay attention. So all the black ball that's happening, it's going to break down. Because the general public is not going to have a choice. They're going to have to choose me. They ain't going to want to, but they're going to have to. Because the streets going to make them say, why this guy don't have a deal? So that was the notion. He was going to knock it down. Anybody who had a hit record out during that time, he was just going to eat it. He didn't care who you were. Anybody in that game who put out a record and it was hot on the streets, he would take that record immediately and make him record a whole song. See, back then, you guys don't really much understand how freestyles worked back then. When someone freestyled on a record, they normally would do a 16, and that's it. That's the record, and they'll do it to the beat. They don't make a whole formulated song. That style did not get fathered until 50 Cent. 50 Cent made that a norm. Now everybody does it, but 50 Cent made that a norm because who would do that? They were like, why are you wasting all your bars and making a whole song to somebody else's record? Because Fifth knew if it's hot, the people like the beat. They like the melody. They like the hook. We can take their song and make it better than them and put it right back out on the streets. And we'll make it on a mixtape. And people going to like our mixtape better than the song. And if they don't like it, we don't like them anyway. Screw them. <laughs> what they going to do about it? And that was the attitude. And he was d the game. 50 was D Bowen the game. People came up and tried to change the narratives. They tried to say, hey, you know, this ain't what you want to get involved in. They warned him. Producers was like, look, where's this guy recording these songs? People trying to find out where could they find this guy? How many songs could they get, <laughs> get from this guy? Stop him from doing what he's doing. But they couldn't. Then Long Island became home of the most awesome, spreaded out <laughs> music you've ever heard in your life. And one places in Queens, the Bland Houses. A guy from the Bland Houses, I don't I can't remember his name. Now he comes along from the Bland Houses and he grabs a tape. One tape that somebody recorded. He's up there in the chicken shack and he's playing it. A cassette tape playing it and it's got that on it all these remixes by 50 cent and g unit then in queensbridge a couple of cats grabbed it some hustlers and they're listening to the lyrics and they's like man this dude here is serious but he talking real see at the time hip-hop it took all the hard stuff it turned the only thing hard out that was, at the time, that was allowed to be hard was DMX. <laughs> you know 
You know, DMX, but then they got DMX making party club songs. So everybody was making club songs. Nobody was really making the street songs no more. Or making the club song sound street. 50 saw that lane and said, that's how I can come back. But anybody who went in and thought about signing them to a deal, Irv and everybody else was extending their them phone calls. Don't you sign this guy. Don't sign him. This guy, he's dangerous. You don't want this guy on your, on your uh, label. And a guy named T-Row from, uh, and Ronnie P from Queensbridge, they had it and they was bumping it. And the bridge. And, you know, they was doing what they was doing at the time. And they have brought it, and next thing you know, the Queensbridge houses, they know who 50 is. So they've been bumping it. He's huge in, in Queensbridge. So the bridge has got it. The streets has got it. Then some place, what they call it, Palmanock. One of, uh, one of the, the DJs for the local clubs that used to be at Eugene's and all these other places, he lived over there. He have his gear and everything else. He got a CD with the artwork on it. Now he's bumping it in the clubs. Now it's spreading. Now, Ravenwoods, the Ravenwoods, they having house parties bumping 50 Cent and G-Unit mixtape in Ravenwoods houses. All the buildings. 50 Cent was taking over Queens. Then it started to branch out. Because the word of mouth was spreading. Shouts out to Builder 39, Ravenswood. Now, all of these things are transpiring. Then, you know, it was some resistance. When somebody was playing it in an area that many felt should have never had it in the first place. You know, it's like one of the most, you know, infamous places ever. You know? It's like, where Prem and all those guys are, you know, that's the area. So while this is going on and 50 Cent's got this buzz, Rockefeller Records is, you know, doing their thing. And they trying to come back and get their artists on the roll, like Memphis Bleak and um, Benny Siegel's coming up. So while Beanie is coming up and he's doing this thing and he's trying to, you know, get in the game and do, you know, do his due, his due diligence. You're looking at a, a whole different situation because he's here in the streets and everybody's talking about, yo, this 50 cent, you know, and. This is, you know, what's going on over here. And this guy is one of the most infamous dudes around. And 50 Cent has got this gangster mentality. And it's a different situation. So when you think of the Baisley Park people, they weren't really playing that music over there. They were afraid to. <laughs> so it was not really, they had other rappers would come through there, but yeah, they weren't really bumping no 50 over there. 
but he was everywhere now. So Jay is hearing 50 Cent and he's not concerned. Jay is, you know, talking about doing his clothing deal and they're worried about, you know, Rockaway building up the rest of the Rockefeller at the time. He's got Beyonce. Jay is on a whole different level. That when Benny Siegel start to come up in the game and making his mix tapes and he's doing the Rockefeller and all this stuff that's going on and 50 Cent is making his buzz, he's listening like, mm, he's never going to make it. He's just going to be a mixtape rapper. It's like, look at him. He's got guns on the album cover. Yeah, he's, he just said, buy the radio. So, you know, they basically blew off 50 Cent. Which is perfect for 50. So that means you ain't trying to take him out. You leaving him alone. Now, when you doing that, other people are at work. And he's on the mixtape and he's going in. I mean, he's going in on Irv. He's going in on Ja Rule. And he's making other songs and... And all of these uh, noises are being paid attention to. Then enter a guy that wanted to change the game. Who was going to get the tape later in Eminem. But before that happens. Benny Siegel. Who was known for being a street cat. From Philly. Got a lot of pull, you know, with a lot of dudes in there. Had a lot of momentum. And everybody was thinking, this is the guy that's going to take off. This the guy going to be the, he's the general. Nothing go down without his watch. So, right off the bat. He's coming out with his tape. And he comes up and been doing his things and hard beats, gutter songs. And he's the one keeping his street on the main circuit. Now, when his album, The, the Truth, came out, you know, that was an underground classic. 50 said, I like that Guess Who's Back track he had. And decided to do a Benny Siegel Guess Who's Back song. That was later, though. That came a little later. But still, he decided to dip into that. Scarface decided to work with him and do that. Now, 50 Cent was on tour with Master P at one point and had put him on the tour. He was trying to get Master P to get down with him and help him out in the situation and represent him, but Master P was going to charge too much at the time. So he, he couldn't really get down with the fee to have Master P represent him at the time to try to get him a deal and everything else plus p situation was changing at that time because cash money was coming into power if that makes any sense to you now jay is like i can't go after jay i mean fifth is like he can't go after jay which is true he can't he ain't in position to go after jay so he's got to go after the soldiers. But he want to make Jay fall too. And that was his motivation. It fed the energy to keep it going. The Ja Rule being on top and all this. He couldn't have that stand. He had to knock that down. Had tracks that they took beats from. But mostly Mob Deep. 
had all these cuts that they loved and they wanted to rock to. And once things started to, to divvy a little bit at the time where once it was a whole lot of dissension going on at the time between Rockefeller and everybody there. And you could see it was starting to break. And Nas and Fifth was like, Nas threw a rock and shattered it. He's like, it's shattered now. Everybody over there, they saw their boss could bleed. <laughs> and that's what Fifth used to joke. If he bleeds, then we can kill it. <laughs> Nas did, he said Nas did the damage, but he didn't know how to finish it. I know how to finish it. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to take everybody out. He's like, Ja got to go. Irvin Ja got to go out this game. So right at the point, 50 making good money, doing what he's doing. And the guess who's back? 50 Cent, CD, mixtape. That was the biggest thing he ever did. Everybody had it. It was so popular. Jay-Z saw it and was like, this dude's nuts. <laughs> and he's got the chain in his, on his hand wrapped up. As if that was the chain that came from Ja Rule. So after hearing these songs and seeing this, Eminem said, I got to get this guy. Because nobody was taking Eminem seriously at the time. He was getting a lot of beefs. He needed some protection. He was the biggest artist in the game. He needed somebody that could protect him. That people respected from the streets perspective. Now he had protection from Runyon Ave dudes from the D when he was in Detroit, Detroit. But he travels. And in the hip hop industry, nobody really respected D12. You know, they weren't finna bag nobody off. You enter 50 Cent. This guy has street credibility. And he's going to give you that credibility by you having him on your side. So this does great for you. Plus, you like his music. M listen to the music like, wait a minute, that's something I would do. But I wonder how our music would work together. M knew he could work with this because he worked with Dre. And what he realizes, 50 is probably a lot better than me. At formulating these songs, <laughs> I need to be listening to him on some of this advice. Fifty signing bonus was one million dollars, and once it was being talked about that Fifth was going to do this deal, Dr. Dre was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! You talking about signing this guy? This guy, I don't know." So Dre was never with the idea. He was against it. He talked to Jimmy. Jimmy was against it. Everybody was against it except for Eminem. And he was very adamant that I need this kind of protection. Just think about it. If it don't work out, if he don't sell a record, it don't even matter because he's helping protect the asset, which is Eminem, who's going to sell the records. So we're going to cover the money anyway. So it's not. It's a no-brainer. And Fifth wanted to be on the big stage really bad. He did. He loved the mixtape thing, but he knew, I got to get on that big stage. Y'all got to open that door and let me get on that big stage, and it's over for the rest of them. Because they, they can't match my energy level. They got there and got stupid and got lazy. He knew it. He was coming for them. So when he came back, and got in the game, it was only to take out Ja and Irv. It was personal. So if he didn't sell a record, he knew, I'm going to get rid of them on my way out. <laughs> now at this time, 
at this time, Irv and Jay-Z are having a fallout. And Fifth is watching all of it. He's watching everything break up. He's seeing Ja Rule beefing with DMX. He's seeing that kind of go into a direction where it's starting. He see X ain't really rolling with them. He's seeing it crumble. He was like, oh, it's crumbling. And they don't even know it. And Fifth see all this happening. And then he saw Jay break up, kind of have a thing with, with uh, Irv Gotti. He saw the dissension and what was happening. He saw when Irv and uh, what's his name, uh, Irv Gotti and Ja Rule came out and they aligned themselves with Suge Knight and they came out and did this song with and did this song with uh, and teamed up with Nas and they talking about they finna sign Nas And they was like, nah, it's for the sign with Murder INC. People didn't know Nas was, you know, Nas and 51 really cool at that time. So when they were talking about doing that, like Nas for the sign with Murder INC. That pissed Jay off. Because Jay-Z is like, what? Y'all talking about signing Nas? And they were serious. Irv think this is a good thing. Because Irv Gotti is thinking, this could bring in, bring an end to the beef. You know, if he signed with us, we could work on getting y'all back together. They was like, this dude tried to end my career. <laughs> then you finna go try to sign Nas? So the dissension was there. But then Irv felt a certain way by Jay because Jay was like blowing him off. Because Jay had a problem with Mob Deep and he messed up Vita's, wanted Vita off the record with Mob Deep. And then he don't want to do nothing with the Murderers album. And every time he's supposed to do a song with Jai, he, he acting like he don't want to do it. So he had a problem with Ja. Ja and Jay had their little thing going over Ego because Jay don't want to be second to nobody and Ja feel like he the king. Talking about he getting more paper than Jigger for his use. So now you got this conflict all going on in the click, and Fifth is sitting there like a strategic chess player saying, I got him. <laughs> I got him. I just got to get to the stage. So he signed one of the worst contracts ever signed in music history for royalties on albums sold. But he got a million dollar signing bonus. They spent about $20 million promoting 50 Cent. It was a mega album rollout budget. They assumed 50 Cent was going to sell maybe 2.5 to 3 million records tops. 50 said they have no idea that I'm going to sell way more records than this. <laughs> And every song 50 had was a hit. They was like, man, how do we cut this off? This song is great, too. How are we going to make this an album? This is going to be the hardest album we ever made. Should we make it a double CD? <laughs> they were confused because he had so much in the tank. The energy level was high because he had a lot of motivation. So now, Fifth comes in into the game, and nobody wants to go against that. It's so much push going on, even with the herb warnings. And then they went there to try to go against it. And that, they got rolled right over. Jay didn't want no parts of it, but was glad it was happening. Because he wanted Ja to fall. Felt Ja head was a little too big. And herb was, you know, buying into it and thinking they were bigger than what they actually were. Now... They needed somebody to smack them upside the head and say, there you go. That's a good look for you. So 50 Cent comes out, boom. Do we even need to go there? 
Fifth is out. He's blowing up. He's on everything. Magazines. Album is selling. It's going crazy. Meanwhile, Kanye West is being promoted by Jay-Z and Steve Stout, who's working with Jay at the time. And he's working with Fifth for a deal. He approached 50 Cent with a deal for Reebok and said, I got a deal on the table right now where you can have your own shoes with Reebok. And this deal is going to be multi-million dollar deal contract. So Fifth was like, all right, cool. Hook it up. Now, Fifth didn't trust Steve Stout anyway because he remembers what happened with Core Mega. And the whole thing with Steve Stout and the firm and how that all went left. And Steve Stout was in the middle. Fifth remember all of it. He was there. He saw it all go down. So when he saw that implode and Steve Stout was in the middle of it, he automatically knew, okay, I'm going to see what you're about. But I'm, I don't trust you. I'm going to keep you at arm's distance. And then I know you Jay-Z's man. But I'm going to deal with you. Because I need to get next to Jay. I didn't already took John and my day gone. They off the picture. <laughs> they know it. Once my album dropped, they don't even know they done. They still think they can compete. They can't. And I need to get next to Jay. So he can know. He can feel that pressure. So he can know I'm, I'm coming for him. So he tells Steve, he's like, yo, we got to do this commercial. And he's like, I'm trying to see if we can get you and Jay to do it together. He's like, yeah, 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 I'm with that. He's like, Jay ain't going to get on no record with me. So that's how Fifth is looking at it like, yeah, he ain't going to get on no record with me. But I ain't going to be the one to say, I ain't going to get on the record with Jay. So they announced the deals that Jay got a Reebok deal coming with his shoe. And Fifth got his shoe coming out. At the same time, the G Unit shoe and the S dots. These are two guys from different sides. Jay's more business class, lax. Fifth is the hardcore, rugged, you know. And it was like, okay, our shoes coming out at the same time. Fifth wanted that. He was like, oh, yes, I want this because I'm going to demolish this guy. I want to beat Jay at everything we do. We're going to compete. So they said, we're going to do a promo. And I talked to Jay, and Jay was with it. They was like, no, nah, Jay going to do the song with you, and he want to do record the video for the shoes together. They was like, Jay down for that? He was like, yeah. Fifth couldn't believe it. So he was like, okay, it's game time. So they meet up to do the commercial. They shake hands and everything. And Phil and Jay was like, you finally made it, man. It took you a minute. And, you know, and, gave, and it was all love. Like, it was no problems whatsoever. Right? They do the commercial. And they came up with the song like that. No time flat. Songs out is done. <clears throat> to this day, that's like the only record they've ever done together, recorded put out who knows one day we might get that union but I doubt <laughs> but nothing's impossible so anyway the song's out it's a hit but 50 cent shoes is crushing the S dies Jay don't care he already got his bread off the shoes <laughs> multi-million like 30 40 million dollars I mean, Fifth Shoes was killing. Because, see, Fifth offered Eminem a piece of G-Unit just for bringing him on there. And he was like, and Eminem, this is why I would give him his props. M said he could have took a percentage of G-Unit if he wanted it. He said, no, nah, man, you built that. That's yours. I ain't going to take it from you or get a piece of it. Fifth gave it to him. He said, man, you got me here on this platform. If you want a piece of G-Unit, you got it. He was, no, 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 man. That's yours. You work hard for it. You built that. That's you. And he allowed Fifth to have G-Unit. 
And when he did that, he didn't know how lucrative G-Unit was going to be. <laughs> but that's what paid 50 the most. He got his biggest contract, biggest check he ever got was from the basically the Reebok deal. Because the G-Unit imprint and all the stuff he was selling with the G-Unit logos and everything, that was selling. Nobody was going to buy S. Doc Cotters. A couple of, you know, bougie dudes bought them, but nobody really bought those shoes. <laughs> Jay's personality can't really sell it, you know? So, that was kind of dead in the water. Jay was like, give me my check. I pushed the shoes. We made, like, what, one or two pairs. We done. Meanwhile, the G units were still going. You know, they were still pushing. Reebok was ready to re-back up with him and do more business so 51 <laughs> he got with jay he outsold jay in the shoe department he was outselling him in the record department now now the game is his he's the biggest artist in the game at this point selling about 12 million records He's diamond on his first album, and he got um, another four, five songs going to come out in about another month. It's just consistent 50, and it would not stop. Now at this point, Fifth didn't realize what else Jay was doing. Jay used his whole, he was playing chess too. Jay was using 50. Fifth didn't even know it. Fifth is thinking, hey, I came up on Jay. I won. I outsold him. Jay was already getting the money off the shoes. He can care less. He need, he wanted 50 to throw a shot at Irv Gotti and Ja. Because they went and did that with Nas and did that video with Nas and made that record talking about signing him. 50 is the biggest artist in the game. Jay is standing next to him and they selling shoes together. That was the piss off Irv and Ja Rule. I'm standing with 50 Cent. <laughs> See, don't bite the hand that was feeding you. That's how Jay was sending the message. 50 never saw Jay was sending that message. It messed up though. It messed his head up like, whoa, he just used me. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm beating Jay. And Jay just played me like that and used me as a prop. I got my money and I'm good, but I really didn't win. <laughs> and then the battle heats up. Because now Fifth realizes I'm, I'm ready now. I'm, I'm solidified in the game. Now, I, I outsold any album, no rapper has sold Diamond besides me and Kanye West in a, in a minute. <laughs> Since Eminem, I got the biggest machine backing me. We got all access to all the money to do all this. I got all these millions of dollars. I'm up there with Jay now. I'm coming. They, I got to be the king of New York. Everybody has to know. Jay can't be the king of New York. Nas don't want it. He ain't going to go up against me. Jay got to fall. He got to bow down. And that was next. And Jay was up for the challenge. And we will save it all from here. And we will hit y'all on part three, which is going to be pretty epic. So don't forget, if you guys missed part one, you can click the link or one of these four videos here. Get caught up. Don't forget to donate to the page. Hit up the Cash App, which is Carcino is the name of the Cash App. Y'all should know that by now. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss these things. And... You want to donate? You can also leave me a message in the stream lab. Click in the link in the description box. I'm out.